Welcome to this webinar of the World Wind Energy Association, which is the first webinar in the year 2023, and the webinar that deals with the situation of small wind markets around the world. So accordingly, this is of course hosted by the our small wind section, and it's my great pleasure to have the co-chairs of our small wind section here with us. Fritz Ock from the Netherlands and Mike Berge from the United States. Um, as usual, just to start with some kind of housekeeping. Yeah, hello, Mike. <laughs> hello, Fritz. I think both of you are now visible. That's good. Some housekeeping rules. Uh, we would request everybody, of course, to stay muted um, um, until you are requested to speak and then unmute yourself. Um, we will have time for questions and answers. If you have any questions in between, please feel free to use the chat window. You can, of course, uh, approach directly other participants or put a question there that we can then later refer to. Um, this is a public meeting, so that means that we are recording this webinar and it will be later published in our YouTube uh, channel. So everybody, please be aware that if you raise your uh, voice, if you also show yourself with your uh, picture, then um, be aware that uh, in principle, everybody can see you, can hear what you're contributing. So this is not an internal, but it's a public meeting. Yeah, with this, uh, let's start with the, the main part of, of our webinar, of course. So the idea is to give you an overview of where small wind stands today. We started working, uh, the focus on small wind more than 10 years ago, organizing at that time, not virtual, but uh, real meetings in presence with the World Summit for Small Wind. Um, at a time when the technology was perceived by many as very promising, um, the situation was at that time comparable to solar PV. And uh, there were many new companies coming up. There were markets which were the very kind of uh, strong development, in particular China, but also United States and some European markets developed. Uh, we all know that, of course, uh, small wind has not kind of developed in parallel with the uh, other, some of the other renewables, but um, has uh, been steadily development. Still, it's a market with rather smaller players, smaller companies involved. And of course, it's a highly decentralized market on the consumer side, which makes it even difficult to gather statistics because uh, hardly anybody knows where the a turbine once it's sold is eventually installed at. So I'm very pleased that we've been able to bring together an excellent panel of experts who will report you about their latest developments and some of the really important market ar markets around the world. And we kind of start in the east, then travel to the west and hear from firsthand from countries around the globe. Uh, the first speaker I have the pleasure to invite is from China, reporting about the Chinese small wind market. Um, it's Mr. Yu Guiyong from the Chinese Wind Energy Association, uh, an association we've proudly been working with uh, for, uh, yeah, so I would say since the, the creation of our uh, organization. And we're very curious to, to learn about the small wind market development in China, knowing that, of course, in the case of large wind turbines, China has now become the dominant market. Again, we know in the year 2022 from the preliminary figures standing for more than half of the, the, the um, wind turbine market size. I just learned today that uh, the uh, market for large wind turbines was 49, around 49 gigawatt in 2022. Um, maybe Mr. Yu, you can uh, just briefly also refer to that. And then we're very curious to hear about uh, how small wind turbine market has developed. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Yu. I hand over to you. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Thanks for your, uh, your introduction. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to take this time to share some information about the small wind industry in China. 
uh, as everybody knows, uh, previously we always share the a big wind industry information, and we have the uh, largest market in China for the for the big industries. But after this so many years development, we have to admit the the fact that the small wind in China is quite another story for uh, for, for for the uh, so far in comparison to the large. As large scale the wind industry. So, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to share some basic information on the uh, the status quo of today and the mainly support status and on why we have a slower development for the small wind in China. So, uh, <clears throat> in the recent years, the the size of a Chinese small wind industry is in a trend of continuous shrinking. So that's a little bit strange, huh? And the number of small wind companies is also decreasing. So, so far we only have um, no more than 30 companies in China and only a few manufacturers remains in the, in the, in the active markets. Uh, but uh, from the, the, the revenues or the benefits in the last year, we see this much more progress. <clears throat> So, uh, so far, there's no, no more than 30 manufacturers for small and medium sized wind turbines manufacturers in China. Uh, here, I list uh, some of the, the, the logos here uh, for your reference. And also, for the past uh, years, two years, the numbers of the units produced is uh, uh, we see a little bit increase. And um, but the whole industry is uh, shrinking. Uh, that's um, uh, that's uh, a, a little bit strange. Huh? And also we see the sales for the for the total sales of the small wind turbines that's mainly exported to to the world. And also for the sales price, it's uh, also decreasing. You know, so it is uh, more competitive than the, the, the than that in the history. So 2028, 21, that's about uh, 8,800 8, Chinese yuan per kilowatt. And uh, for the last, uh, for the, that year before, that's uh, uh, 600 and uh, 100 Chinese yuan. So it's a little bit higher for the, uh, for the per kilowatt price. And also for, as everyone knows, they, most of the, the productions and the sales happened overseas. That means uh, they export the turbines to, to other countries, not installed in Chinese, uh, in China. So the small wind exporters in 2008, that, uh, the biggest one is Shanghai General Power and Shandong Haiyuan, uh, for example. And also they exported nine, uh, 590 units we see a little bit slower than the, than, than, than the last year. And also they, uh, we admit that for some countries with underdeveloped power grids, uh, we'll have demand for small wings. And also they, uh, for some European countries so for the higher price uh, and for some, uh, uh, a uh, electricity outage happens, they would need the independent uh, small wind uh, systems for the households. And, uh, and also we, uh, we have uh, information from the, the Nordic countries to China. They have uh, uh, maybe uh, much more demand in the future or in the next few years for the small wind turbines. And also they have uh, transmitted this information from the China Development Banks or the, the uh, other uh, identities or uh, agencies to China. So uh, we, we admit, uh, we ass assess the whole information and have the conclusion that the export, the export sales will, uh, will still increasing for the next few years. <clears throat> um, Take it for example, a, so a Wuxi uh, based uh, a small wind company and it's a platform that uh, we call it uh, AEI Express. 
selling products directly to the international buyers from the internet platforms. And also from the data from the March Expo held by Alibaba in March this last year, it showed a 200% increase in the total sales and 100% increase in the number of buyers. So <clears throat> we have to uh, analyze the, uh, this phenomena, why we have the, the, the large scale of the industry uh, developing very fast in China, but we have the small wind industry uh, shrinking years on year. So I think the first reason is that it's quite difficult for the manufacturers to balance between the technology in, in investment and the cost. So the stability for the small wind turbines is not quite good so far. And also the next, uh, the second one is the rapid advancement or adoption, the progressive technology for independent PV systems has taken the place of the small wind turbines. Previously, especially for the, uh, the, the, the 10 years ago, we have the small wind turbines for the isolated areas, especially for the suburbs, right? Uh, for the countryside and for the farmers and the mice, you know, for their uh, uh, electricity supplies. But so far, uh, they have they taken more convenient and more uh, competitive independent PV systems to instead. And also as present, China has basically achieved the full grid coverage all over the, the country, the countryside. And the history of the running off grid small wind turbines power is over, it's becoming a history. So uh, the most of the, and also today, even we have the distributed policies, we have the distributed uh, 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 incentives, uh, stimulus for the industry, but the most distributed wind power has also operates grid connectedly. So the demand for small wind turbines is shrinking. And uh, now we have the uh, distributed uh, wind power industry, but it still remains about the 50 megawatts capacity for the whole. So people will use the, the big turbines like five megawatts for one project or three megawatts wind turbines, but not use the small ones. So that's the, the total story in China. I think the, in the last few years, we have the market, but mainly also for overseas market. Yeah, that's my information here. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for summarizing the development. And when you look at the, the numbers, then actually there is quite still uh, many units are sold in China, I understand. Although the you are very clearly, uh, I think, uh, describing a realistic picture where the challenges are at the moment of small wind. Um, do we have any questions for Mr. Yu? So as Mr. Yu informed me that he has to leave a bit earlier and he cannot stay until the end of this webinar, I'd like to encourage you again, if you have questions, then please um, now raise your hand. So if that's not the case, then again, a great thank you also for staying with us. Oh, there is one, there is one question from uh, Pranav Tetali. So if you please mute yourself and maybe introduce yourself with your organization. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is uh, Pranav and I am a st startup company focused on developing an innovative small wind turbines. Uh, and it, it was interesting to hear that the market is shrinking in China, but if uh, w what could what could be my, I would like to have the speaker's opinion that what could be done that it can be changed or, or what is his opinion about it? Like, how can we uh, en enhance the demand, I mean? Mr. Q, you, do you have an answer to this? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I quite that follow this uh, question. Could you please make it uh, shorter, please? Thank you. Sorry for that. 
Yeah, I mean, um, you explained us the reasons yeah. why market is shrinking, but uh, are there any ways or uh, in your opinion to, to uh, increase the market size or to expand it? Yeah, uh, to my extent, uh, we, 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 we don't think the market size will, will grow very, very fast or getting bigger. So for the total uh, we, we see today, it's also shrinking. Yeah. If the demand from the overseas market uh, is getting bigger, then the, 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 the manufacturers or industry in China will get uh, bigger. But uh, I mean, the total demand is from the overseas market, not from domestic market. Okay, yeah, understood. Thank, thank you. There's, Thank you. and I'm, I'm curious, we will hear from other markets, how those markets, uh, what is driving them. We have one question here in the chat from Ian Baring Good, uh, from, uh, as far as I remember, our friend from the United States, who would like to know what is the size, ra size range of turbines that are being produced in China? I think I guess the, the, what I know what the answer is, but uh, Mr. Yu, can you explain what is the smallest and the largest, what's the range of turbines? For today's uh, small wind turbines is about from the 100 kilowatts to 600 kilowatts. Yeah, that means from the small to the medium sized ones. There yeah. are also manufacturers who, who produce in the kilowatt size, right? Kilowatt size, most of them are kilowatt size. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Then um, I don't see any other hands raised. Uh, Mr. Pranav, I think you you're, have your hands still raised, so maybe you can lower it. Thank you. Then thank you again, um, Mr. Yu, for being with us. And, uh, and let's go to the next country. We stay in the region and we look now into Japan. And it's my great pleasure to have with us Mr. Masaya Kubo from the uh, Japanese Small Wind Turbine Association. Um, Mr. Kubo, it's my pleasure to hand over to you. Okay, hi. Uh, thank you for inviting me here for this webinar. And uh, my name is Masai Kubo. I'm a chairman of the uh, Japan Small Wind Turbine Association. And uh, here we go. And the uh, one, I also have to leave earlier and uh, you know, after you know, finished my presentation. And uh, my contents are chapter one is a small window turbine overview, and the chapter two is providing a design overview, and the chapter three is uh, discusses the trends of a small window turbine in Japan. Uh, chapter one what is small window turbine? And uh, we are actually polar exactly the same as the uh, IEC 61400-2 and the uh, Japanese industry uh, standard uh, we call JIS is uh, you know the uh, same as the IEC 61400-2 enacted without changing any technical content and uh, I don't I don't explain about the in UK, but uh, I just uh, explain about in Japan. Uh, small scale power generation equipment was applied in uh, FIT feeding time in 2014. Uh, JSWTA mainly developed standard, but not widely spread as expected. While the number of accidents of large wind turbine decreased, it was a bit earlier for small wind turbine using FIT. That's my opinion. Uh, in result, the number of power plants using small wind turbine was, was not increased as expected. And I believe there are three you know, major reasons. First, lack of reliable air 
elastic version for a small wind turbine and I needed to reduce cost because the swept area is limited. And uh, the last one is the difficulty in standardizing various small uh, turbine models. And uh, lack of reliable simulation for turbine. And uh, I, I think it, this is my opinion, but the IAC uh, 61400 2 permits the use of simple load calculations. I think uh, it should not have been permitted using the SLM. And the windmills have been used for a living for a long time, and anyone could build them in EU. Anyone can design small wind turbine, but not many people can prove the safety of a small wind turbine. So it's been used in only a few decades. The windmills are used for electricity generations. Uh, can Tim Tim Croft? I, I don't know how to pronounce this, but the, in Denmark was the first large scale uh, wind turbine put into operation in 1978. So uh, it's it's pretty new in industry. I think uh, you know most of the people say uh, it's already past you know a half century, but uh, you know comparing another industry like automobile and uh, you know, as an industry it's, it's pretty new industry i think so uh, uh second reason is needed to uh, reduce cost because the swept area is limited and out power of wind tower is depend on the swept area from a business point of view increasing the size of a swept area is essential uh this is my opinion and the third reason is the uh, uh, many large wind towering uh, three blade horizontal axis for recovering development costs. Some differences between large scale wind towers are you know, fouling mechanism, pitch mechanism, airfoil shape, control, upwind and downwind. Uh, And basic design has been established in consideration of fouling mechanism, uh, natural frequency of wind turbine, uh, resonance caused by wind fluctuations, surf ex ex uh, surf, uh, excited vibration and the safety and lifespan. And uh, many tracks have six wheels to uh, distribute the load, but for a passenger car, uh, six wheels are inefficient in fuel consumption and uh, operatively. Uh, for large wind turbine, the three bridge types have become mainstream to reduce capex and opex. And I believe difficulty with the small wind turbines are due to a wide variety of usage, rural area of America can be fixed by themselves, low initial capital cost, high power generation efficiency, rather than noise. In densely populated Asia, noise problem cannot be avoided. So to gain more energy, if the rotational speed is increased, the dash value will also increase uh, proportionally. Vertical axis wind turbine is quieter, but its generated power is lower. No standard for wind turbine uh, control mechanisms will require a lot of time to get cert certified. Uh, to reduce the cost of transmission and the distribution, standardization is required for production, distribution, construction as an industry. Uh, presence of a global market leader is the key. So our design overview is a, you know, anyone can build a windmill, but uh, achieving safety is not something anyone can do. Knowledge of wind towering design has not been generalized. 
uh, wind turbine design requires a wide range of fields, uh, fluid dynamics, uh, machinery, electricity, uh, production, construction, and maintenance. Industry most similar to the environment is the aircraft industry, but the difference is that aircraft industry has been funded by the national defense budget. Each country spends money for wind power generation industry as it is another energy source, but the world's oldest and still operating power plant, uh, King Plot, founded in the 1970s. Budget and the scale of the project are quite small. So, uh, I'm not going to say anything, but uh, uh, my main point is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the size of a swept area is limited to below 200 meters uh, square meters, and uh, design must also look at the 50-year extreme wind speeds, turbulence, gas, and the direction of uh, variations to analyze the fatigue uh, needed to obtain the stresses from the air forces by real wind, but not using wind tunnel and et cetera, et cetera. So, and the chapter three is a future prospects for small wind turbines. Each country promotes wind turbine using the various systems. It's not yet spread due to various reasons. Uh, cost issue. Uh, the spread of renewable energy requires uh, the same or lower cost than existing power generation facilities. The term grid parity is used as a benchmark for the milestone of achieving power generation at a cost lower than that of existing power generation facilities. The simplest way to achieve this grid parity is to increase the size of the swept area as the energy that can be obtained from the air velocity. The wind is the uh, cubic curve for every one meter per second increase in air velocity. It's necessary to take account of various factors such as production efficiency and the construction efficiency. The efficiency of power generation as a nation needs to be discussed, not only for power generation facilities, but also for transmission and distribution. It is necessary to take a series of steps to make renewable energy the main source of power. Small wind timing must achieve grid power with limited swift area. Uh, this is uh, and, uh, the problem. Uh, Reaction to obtain the necessary exception to talk with a small displacement is not along with limited resources and environmental load and is supported by various customers. And so, you know, in distributed areas with abundant wind energy, small and medium sized wind towering equipment can be effective renewable energy derived generators that can achieve the grid party. Uh, this is my opinion. Yep. And there are many issues other than cost, uh, NIMBY uh, problem not in my backyard. Uh, why they accept the use of wind towering as a solution to environmental problems. There's a fact that there are many people who have a hard time to install a wind tower near their homes. And the uh, establishment of a system for leasing power grids from power utilities, the establishment of certain rules for avoiding the disruption of installation of wind turbines, and uh, and the solution to uh, these problems will require the existing uh, leading companies that can lead indefinitely. So in Japan, you know, uh, Zephyr Corporation is constantly striving to solve the uh, problems and to develop small and medium wind turbines. 
that are needed by various stakeholders. And this is it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Kubo, uh, for this also very realistic uh, um, discussion of what keeps the markets back. What's the size in Japan? How many small wind turbines are there? Do you have some some figures? Uh, no, I don't have. I don't have like that. Yep, but uh, I, I believe you know, most of uh, small wind turbines are used uh, by uh, feeding tariff. So uh, the share of using feeding tariff is more than ninety percent. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay, so that is the the support scheme that that has uh, kind of created some the market there. Do we have any questions from Mr. Kubo? As you heard, uh, Mr. Kubo also has to leave early. Of course, it's late uh, evening now in Japan. Um, so we appreciate uh, that you've been with us uh, in the evening of your time. Um, how, if there are any questions, please raise your hand. If not, then again, a great thank you for being with us and sharing your views. And then we come to the next speaker. And it's my pleasure now to welcome the chair of our small wind section, the co-chair, I should say, uh, Mike Berge from the United States. I think there is not much need to introduce you because everybody who is somehow in the small wind business knows your name, Mike. Uh, Mike, you're going to speak now about the markets in North America and Canada. And I'm very much looking forward to hearing about uh, the developments there. I had the pleasure to recently join your distributed wind energy uh, conference, which was an encouraging event, I must say. So I look forward to hearing from you. Mike, you're still muted trying desperately to yeah, that sounds good now now i can hear you <laughs> all right Welcome. yeah Welcome. so i opened my slides before i unmuted and and turned on my camera and then at lo i lost those controls so uh, my apologies um if i can figure out how to show my face i will do so oh, let me go. just invite there you because i think i can do that yeah. oh there you okay are, yes. uh, I, I can it. switch off my camera and we focus fully yeah. on you so do, um, uh, can you see my slides yes Okay. Actually, but we see the presenters mode, so we see also the next slide. Uh, okay, well, let me see if I can <clears throat> change that. Um, if you're on a, a double screen, might go to display settings and swap screens up at the top. Uh, display. You were just there, right, right next to the the show transpar in the in the upper left. Yeah, I'm, let's see. I'm curious, I sometimes have that problem as well. So I'm going to bail. And then um, that might be my best uh, uh, way of, I don't want to take too much time as I try to figure out this crazy system. Can, can, can people see my uh, slides? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm just going to do it this way. I, I, I'll figure it out later. So anyway, uh, my name's Mike Berge. I'm uh, uh, president of Berge Wind Power Company and, and co-chair of the Small uh, Turbine Committee of, of the World Wind Energy Association. But today I'm representing our uh, National Trade Association, the Distributed Wind Energy Association, of which I'm, I'm the president. Um, DEWEA represents all sizes of distributed wind and by distributed wind um hmm. really if you try i think the previous was mode was better than what you have now all right it's a bit more okay distractive all right um so uh distributed wind uh for us is um behind the meter and remote uh so it's it's large it's wind turbines of any size but serving local loads. Um, we also include front of the meter, by, which means a small wind farm on that's installed on the uh, distribution grid. So it's lower voltage. 
Um, but our, our, our association mostly represents small and medium uh, turbine manufacturers and the distribution um, uh, networks of those systems, the installers and, and resellers, and then the supply chain. So companies who build things that we buy to build, build turbines. Um, so we use, for small wind turbines, we use, uh, I think, an internationally uh, recognized uh, size limit of 100 kW. That's actually in some of our legislation. Uh, our active manufacturers in the U.S. are Primus, Primo, uh, SD Wind, which is imported, uh, Berge, QED, E of Cycle, which is imported. And But we, I should point out that <clears throat> we have a very robust R&D program funded by the Department of Energy um, and uh, largely um, uh, um, managed through the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. And we have Ian Beringold uh, on, on the line here, uh, and uh, he manages that program. And it has been excellent over the last decade in supporting manufacturers to reduce the cost of energy, to improve their technology and become more competitive particularly against imported solar. Uh, and so we have companies like Sunsite, Pecos, Wind Harvest, and XFlow um, that are at the uh, prototype or pre-production stage and will soon have competitive small turbines on the market. Uh, we also have uh, Siva, uh, EWT, and Carter uh, in the mid-range market uh, here, here in the U.S. Um, today, I'm going to... Um, tell you why the United States has gone from a has run uh, modest market to probably the best market for small wind turbines in the world. Uh, and I'll uh, take a partial credit for that. Uh, our association has lobbied the federal government uh, and for over a decade, and um, we have managed to uh, keep pace with solar incentives uh, uh, at least at the federal level, and now it creates um, the, a, a, a high growth rate for for the small wind turbine uh, market in the U.S. And I'll be explaining uh, the details of that here in a minute. Um, but first, let me let me uh, point to a couple of important studies, uh, and these are studies that I think. Um, if they could be replicated in other countries, would help grow those markets. Um, so in, in 2016, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory published a, um, a market survey uh, where they, they use model, uh, advanced modeling techniques to look at the potential for distributed wind. That includes both uh, turbines of all sizes, but they came up with a technical potential of eight terawatts, huge number, um, and that uh, distributed wind was practical, could be employed at almost 50 million sites in the U.S. Um, that the uh, potential that they they um, found, Mike, yes. Just, just I'm not sure you stood the second slide. Whether you talk about another slide already, just to yeah. Well, mention then, that. yeah, I don't. Uh, I mean, we see the second slide here still. I don't know what, uh, um, so um, bear with just, me just a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to actually um, uh, pull out of this, uh, see if I can turn off that uh, annoying view of. Yeah, we see the potential slide now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. I yeah. So I got rid of the presenter view, which uh, obviously I, I have. Um, so the NREL study showed that um, distributed wind would uh, had um, a potential for at, at uh, almost fifty million sites, and when you add it all together, um, it, it is as great or even greater than that for offshore wind, which of course has tremendous uh, political and, and, and financial here in the U.S.
So as there there is a technical problem now. Your we got somehow interrupted, Mike. Uh, your slides were in a perfect mode, but now they've disappeared, and you're muted. Like maybe first unmute yourself. There we go. That seems to be unmuted now. Yes. And, then... and you know, I'm not even seeing. She, your screen, it was perfect now, but it's disappeared right. suddenly. Yes, that looks good. Okay. We'll keep our fingers crossed. I'm sorry about the disruptions. Um, so in, in, in uh, last year, they published a follow-on study um, that added now a hundred, uh, utilized 155 million uh, parcel database, which means they could look at every residential, commercial, farm, industrial site in the U.S. and uh, look at its wind potential and um, and figure out what size turbine could go there. So it's a, a much um, uh, richer uh, uh, database of the potential. And what they showed, let's see. I'm having a hard time. The slides are just not. I'm trying to advance slides and unable to. Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, and so um, they were able to to look at particular what we call uh, hot zones for for market potential. Uh, and um, and in summary, they found that the economic potential, that is the sites where the wind turbines, a distributed wind turbine would pay for itself in its operating lifetime uh, without subsidies. Uh, was 1,400 gigawatts, which is about half of our national uh, energy consumption. So, the, and, and that compares with an actual developed installed base of about one and a half gigawatts. So, um, we have a, a tremendous growth potential. And because of recent legislation, we're likely to uh, actually see that potential realized. Um, in, um, in August, the um, president signed the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, which is the, I've been in this for 40 years, and this is the most uh, consequential uh, piece of, of uh, clean energy legislation in, in my four, almost five decades. So what it did was provide a 10-year extension of the investment tax credit. And that's the form of subsidy that we primarily use for smaller projects in the U.S. So it means that if you have a, a tax obligation to the federal government, you can offset that as a direct dollar for dollar credit uh, with this, this investment tax credit. So they gave a 10-year extension at 30 uh, percent plus a two-year phase down. So it runs through uh, 2020, uh, 2034. And that's a long runway. That means that we can confidently make investments in larger factories. Uh, we know that the market will be there. Um, for commercial projects, uh, non-residential, there's also a 10% adder for domestic content which, in which you have to use all US produced steel and have at least 45% US content. And that goes up uh, year after year. Uh, the threshold, but that additional 10% goes to the customer purchasing the system. Also, if you install a project, um, this also goes for solar, but if you install a, a project in a place that is targeted as a what we call disadvantaged customers, so low income, Indian tribes, um, uh, places where they're transitioning from coal, uh, or away from coal, uh, you can get an additional, the customer can get an additional 10 or, or 20%. So you can see that you can get up to 50 or 60% in total um, uh, subsidy uh, if, you, if you meet the criteria. There's also for businesses, uh, depreciation um, schedule can be five year or one year on, under certain conditions. 
and very importantly, a couple of a couple of uh, new additions we've never had before. A the commercial investment tax credit can be transferred to another company, and typically you can sell that for about eighty five cents on the dollar, about eighty five cents. So so even if you're losing company is losing money and you have no tax do you can sell that tax credit that you've earned to somebody who does pay tax um, and if you're a public agency or a nonprofit or a tribe say a church um, then there's what's called a direct pay option and it acts like a rebate even though those uh, entities do not pay taxes the they there's and the tax credit would normally not be usable by them uh, the government under this new program will actually send a check. It's just like a rebate program. Um, there are, in addition, there are uh, domestic manufacturing tax credits for turbines, towers, and inverters. There have been, uh, uh, this also goes for solar products. And so there's been a slew of announcements of um, new manufacturing, uh, 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 new uh, uh, factories for solar that's being set up. They're uh, bringing in uh, manufacturing from overseas. Um, this was part of the industrial policy of the of, of the uh, Biden administration to uh, increase the uh, manufacturing of clean energy uh, products in the U.S. Um, for the credits that I'm mentioning, uh, small wind turbines must be certified. But the good news is that there is now a new simpler uh, standard for certifying turbines up to 150 kW. And you can, you can look online and see that the Small Wind, uh, uh, Small Wind Certification Council, SWCC, is a, a good resource. A number of companies are getting their new certifications under that. But you will need to get that to access the, for your customers to access these subsidies. Um, the uh, legislation added battery storage and uh, also interconnection properties and microgrid controllers. So there's a trend towards uh, microgrids with batteries uh, and uh, sophisticated uh, grid support uh, functions. And um, the new law supports that, that work with uh, robust subsidies. Um, in addition to that, there, there's a bunch of money uh, that has in the program or in the legislation for tribes to uh, spend on resiliency, um, tribes to spend on electrifying unelectrified homes with renewables, uh, particularly in Alaska, uh, New Mexico, Arizona. There are a number of, of reservations that still have uh, are not fully wired. Uh, and rural co-ops, uh, rural co-ops represent about 85 percent of the rural uh, territory um, uh, in the U.S., uh, about 100 million uh, customers, they get $9.7 billion to buy renewable energy equipment, storage, and efficiency investments. And there are many other provisions in this uh, $370 billion clean energy bill. Uh, and finally, um, very importantly for small wind turbines, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act provided uh, about $2 billion over the next 10 years for the U.S. Department of Agriculture grants and guaranteed loans for farms and, and rural businesses. So right now, a small wind system, a farmer uh, buying a small uh, can apply for a 40 percent grant. We think it's going to go to 50 percent after March 1st. Uh, it, it does involve a burdensome application process, but there are there are services that will do that, and some dealers will do that for the customers. Um, the important thing to remember here is that the ITC, the investment tax credit, and the grants can both be used at the same time. So it's possible to get a 90% or even higher subsidy uh, for small wind turbines on farms and rural businesses. So that is propelling this market uh, like, uh, like nothing else. Um, um, I know companies are, are, are getting orders at the fastest rate that they, they ever have, and the uh, market in the U.S. is, is really growing. Um, let me conclude by just saying that um, we've, we have a very active, very um, uh, dynamic market now in the U.S., and we don't have enough small wind turbines on the market. 
Uh, and so we invite anyone with a good quality, certifiable, small wind turbine to come here and help us show that distributed wind can be a major source of clean energy. Um, and if you'd like to know more about that, I invite you to write to me. The best way to stay uh, on top of the opportunity is to join the Distributed Wind Energy Association, which you can do for as little as $600, and we would welcome uh, your interest. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Mike. That was a very good uh, uh, insight into the Inflation Reduction Act. I think everybody heard about it, but uh, now presenting it from the angle of small and distributed wind that is that is very uh, useful for everybody here. Uh, just before we ask others for for um, questions, comments, uh, can you kind of uh, indicate what's been the market? size like let's say the last two three years and what do you have any concrete expectations how that will develop i, I actually don't know the numbers uh yeah the the pacific northwest laboratories here does a survey each year and publishes a report uh, so go look up uh, pnnl um you know uh, uh distributed wind uh, market research uh or something like that you'll find the reports um I, I'm afraid I, I, I just don't know the numbers. But you expect the substantial growth, I understand, based on the, the Inflation Reduction Act. and The, the companies who are active in the market are seeing it already. Um, you know, the, it's the uh, uh, strongest growth in 40 years. Oh, that's really good news. And it's great to see that we hear really good news now from... Uh, the United States in terms of renewable energy uh, pushing that market. So thank you very much, Lindsay. Sheridan has just shared the link. I think everybody can uh, have a look at that and find out the market size at this point of time. And we will have a look in a year again, of course, and compare. Um, do we have any questions or comments regarding Mike's presentation? And please raise your hand. So that seems not the case. Um, again, thank you very much for your presentation. I mean, we will have later the opportunity as well uh, to uh, communicate and, uh, and, and discuss. Now let's go to our next speaker. And it's my pleasure now to invite our second co-chair of WWEA Small Wind section. And that's Fritz Ock from the Netherlands. Fritz, you've been uh, one of the pioneers of uh, renewable energy in the Netherlands, but in particular uh, worked a lot on small wind, and you will present us how European markets have been developing. Fritz, the floor is yours. Okay. So the picture looks a bit frozen. Are we can you, can, you, can you see my screen? No, and you're okay. The picture, the video is frozen. So okay, then I try this one. Maybe stop the video and start it again. You don't see my screen? No, I don't see your screen, and we okay. even see your video is not moving. Okay. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> can you just switch off and switch on? This? Your... Yeah, now it comes, yes. Okay, yeah. Oops. Yes, now you're back. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> well, um, it was very difficult to make a, a market overview um, for the uh, small and mid-sized wind turbines in, uh, in Europe. Um, but I uh, want to share some insights I, uh, I found. Um, I um, looked at uh, the information that uh, the Wind Europe and some national wind associations in Europe uh, had on th this. Um, I had a view on some samples uh, of commercial market reports, 
um, uh, in one of the other slides, I will uh, uh, tell some more about that. Um, and uh, I got some information from uh, personal, um, regional and national contacts. Uh, Mike already mentioned it, uh, the NREL, National Renewable Energy Laboratory, uh, brought out an interesting report for North America, uh, in which they showed there was a potential of 1.4 gigawatt of small and medium wind turbines. Uh, at the last eight um, um, international wind conference from the Volker Center, the NREL uh, was also there, and I asked them um, their view on Europe. <clears throat> and then sa they said, uh, with an educated guess, uh, you could say that uh, Europe could have uh, the same result for such a study uh, as in North America. So that, that should give them uh, um, gr uh, somehow great that the European market is. Well, um, there is something going on in Europe um, by islands uh, who are uh, organized and who are organizing themselves uh, about 100% renewable energy. Um, and then uh, there are um, farmers, small and medium enterprises, and um, the, in Germany, the German Small Wind uh, Association um, wants to uh, have 1,000 uh, seabirds treatment plants foreseen with a um, medium wind turbine. Um, so that's that's uh, also uh, uh, a possible market. Um, it's 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 locally. Um, sewage, sewage treatment plants uh, are becoming more important. Um, um, are, are using much more energy. Uh, there's a lot of um, um, medicals in uh, sewage uh, and uh, PFAS and other. Uh, vulnerabilities and they have to be they get out of the water um, so that's that's also a, a market then also in Germany um, there is one of the small wind uh, manufacturers Movia has made a deal um, they are uh, placing 700 uh, small wind turbines uh, on telecom base stations and this market is as big as 400,000 uh, um, mobile, um, mobile towers. Um, in the graphic, you can see uh, how much uh, and divided on the companies uh, that are uh, uh, exploring, um, uh, that are exploiting telecom base stations. Worldwide, this market is uh, of four million base stations. Um, and then um, I, I call it renewed electrification because uh, on, uh, in general, uh, whole Europe is 100% electrified. Um, but a lot of this uh, 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 electrification um, well, I didn't wrote the word war, but uh, you have also uh, natural disasters, and that gave the possibility uh, to renew the ele local electricity situation. And then a lot of wind turbines uh, that are now 20, 25 years old, and they need to re be refurbished or retrofit. Um, so that's, that's also a uh, market because um, uh, you, they have a place, so uh, you don't need uh, uh, renew, to renew your um, um, the governmental uh, uh, um, 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 how do you say um, you, you don't have to renew your, your uh, 
I don't know the word at the moment. Um, 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 no, you're allowed. You're allowed to to uh, to place a new one. Um, then um, it's it's a niche market at the moment, but uh, uh, ITM Power has uh, for several years now. Um, a mid-sized wind turbine with a local hydrogen production uh, and then a place where you can refuel your hydrogen uh, car. Um, then um, supporting local heating demand, especially uh, this is used in Denmark uh, because when Denmark has uh, uh, 100% uh, uh, electricity from uh, wind, uh, they can sell it to, to Norway or other countries, um, but they will get um, uh, one cent, one euro cent a kilowatt hour uh, pro kilowatt hour. Um, and when they want it back, they have to buy it at 19 cents a kilowatt hour. So. Uh, it's a business model for the cable to Norway, uh, but um, they think it's it's better to use it in a, a heat storage uh, locally. Uh, all the surplus electricity uh, used that in heat storage in, in Denmark at the moment. Then there are also places in Europe with uh, sensitive habitat uh, um, in which uh, um, you can also have smaller uh, smaller wind turbines uh, to get locally uh, the uh, strengths in the electricity grid. Uh, and then uh, there's a growing use of uh, small wind turbines at festivals and uh, there's research in peacekeeping operations from the military. Well, um, it's not only wind turbines, it's also the controllers. Um, um, automation is uh, also a huge, huge market. Then there is also uh, airborne uh, pilots. It's it's still uh, pilots. Uh, so, but it's it's a market. We also don't forget don't don't forget uh, good water. Uh, it's it's a hot topic at the moment in uh, in Europe. Um, we also uh, should have uh, attention for the hybrid situations. Uh, wind is not the only solution. Then I uh, was also an uh, uh, interesting publication from the European Academy on Wind Energy uh, about uh, small wind turbines. Yeah, I think this, this slide shows how difficult it is uh, to get an, an overview. These are exception, exceptions uh, from uh, uh, commercial market reports on small wind. And uh, this is what they show as uh, key market players. So there are some turbines manufacturers that is for years are out of the market. So uh, when I see such a list, uh, I shouldn't trust such a market overview. And this is a market overviews that show you the market, uh, let's say from 2022 uh, to 2030. But when you place uh, manufacturers on the on a list that are out of the market for five years now, so. Um, I shouldn't trust such a report. Um, and um, we need time to get in contact uh, with uh, manufacturers uh, that possible are active in Europe uh, to get uh, in, in the future, let's say next year, uh, a better overview from everyone who wants to react. Such a report mostly is three to four thousand euros for to getting an overview. Now this is the result uh, what you get. Yeah, um, 
next year there will be a better overview, uh, a more detailed overview. And if you want to give uh, some uh, additions, comments, uh, you're welcome to do that. Yeah, thank you very much, Fritz, for presenting, I think, the diversity of the, the, the small wind markets and the different opportunities that we see, also the challenges that we see, and in particular, I think, the statistics that we've always been, of course, uh, uh, struggling with, how to find reliable information about the status and uh, this coming and going. And I see here um, there's a comment from one of our members, actually, Viking Wind, from Ulrich are still in business. That's important also to mention. Um, yeah, um, thank you for that. Do we have any questions or comments for Fritz? That seems not the case. And let's go. Though there is one, Pranav. Uh, hi, uh, can you hear me? Hi, Fritz. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, so, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's nice nice to hear your uh, uh, your talk because we are also based in Netherlands in Eindhoven. Uh, uh, the one question I always get is this, is that the how because the le legal frameworks the permissions to install small wind turbines is not very clear and varies by every city by city. Do you think this this will be a hurdle in in growing this market or? Is there a way, or is is it's not a big problem? Um, Stefan, can you um, can the, you repeat the building, that? I'm, I'm still a listening problem. The the building permitting situation. Pranav was saying that um, there are too many different rules for getting a building permit, even within the Netherlands, that every city has different rules. And how do you see that that can be tackled, that there is a kind of more unification or more uniform rules? Yeah, yeah. It is, that's a good question. Um, and the WWA uh, had in the, in the past already uh, webinars uh, on this. Uh, you, you, you can um, have more webinars, uh, several more webinars on uh, only on regulations. It's not only the Netherlands, it's whole Europe uh, in which the regulations uh, uh, are different. And uh, in the past, uh, um, with uh, earlier conferences, uh, we had a lot of um, 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 presentations uh, in which regulations uh, um, uh, were, were, were presented for each country. Very, very long presentations, and it's 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 dynamic. It changes. Um, um, so, so no, I, it, it's a problem of all Europe. And I saw uh, it's also in other uh, uh, countries. Um, it is it's also a problem in other parts of the world. It's also a problem. Yeah, that's certainly something that cannot be immediately changed, and it's 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 a challenge without doubt. So we have one more question here or comment from Ian Bering. Good, if you could. Um, this yeah. Good question. afternoon, everybody. Hello. Um, uh, probably a two-part question. Um, what we have heard from manufacturers in Europe is that that similar to what what Mike Berge indicated for the U.S. market. That there's a bit, there has been a large uptick in the desire for distributed wind. So I'm thinking of companies like Exant, um, um, now EOCycle, and and so wanted to get a sense um, from you, Fritz, or other other European colleagues about whether they see that kind of across the industry there. And then the second part, so that's more in regards to your manufacturing base. The second question is around the policy market. Um, certainly with the war. Um, electricity prices in many countries have gone up, um, which would lead one to to think that that like in the U.S., distributed wind combined with solar and storage or other technologies would would really be making a comeback, and and that federal policy would start to favor more local generation. And I was wondering if if that was the case in Europe, um, if that was the the sense or that, that the European Union is moving in that direction, even if it hasn't gotten there yet. Thank you. 
Again, so Sarah, like you could. try brief uh, response if possible. Uh, two questions. Eh? Well, uh, can you can you repeat it for me? Sorry. Yeah, the first one is is whether the the distributed wind industry in Europe is also starting to see an uptick in growth in orders. That's what um, we've heard, but no, no, that's 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 difficult. Um, um, especially Germany has some uh, figures. Um, but uh, in my personal context with some manufacturers, um, um, they don't speak about growth. Okay. And then is the European, does the European Union have any policy um, similar uh, to, to kind of support local generation that includes distributed wind? I don't understand. Is there any support for local locally generated renewable energy that includes small wind if i if i may try it's, to it's, answer that i think that is mainly covered by in theory by the energy communities and by energy sharing which is part of european legislation and would allow local consumers to buy from locally local generation units that may include small wind without any extra taxes or, or anything like that the, the, the challenge here is that it is impl uh, implemented um, uh, not equally uh, across Europe. Um, like uh, I was recently in Spain at a conference. They have a, have rules that I think up to five kilometers it's possible to share. Uh, other countries, Austria, Italy have done that quite well. Germany has practically no, uh, no rule yet. So there is certainly not the one answer, but I would say, uh, Fritz, please correct there me. Does, there's special Italy, and um, there was also a period in the in, uh, UK. So and in some countries, um, there are periods uh, in which uh, there's an interesting fit or uh, stimulation. Very good. We have our next speaker coming who may also answer or partly answer some of these questions. Um, so Fritz, thank you very much for your presentation and you stay with us. So if we have additional questions, you may address that um, later as well. It's my great pleasure. And uh, I'm, I'm glad kind of uh, last minute we managed to get in touch and have you here on board. Alistair Munro, who is the... Uh, uh, CEO and founder of uh, Rise Energy, an important player on the market. Uh, we've invited you to speak about the British market, but please feel free also to refer to those questions that were just raised. So great pleasure, Alistair, to have you here with us. A, a warm welcome and the floor is yours. Okay. Um, thank you very much. And thank you to the previous speakers. Um, can you hear me clearly? Yes. And now we go into the usual screen sharing issue. Um, have you allowed me to share screen? I have made you co-host, so you should be allowed to share your screen, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me just check. I'm afraid I'm not seeing the shared screen option. That is unfortunate, and I it, cannot make more than... Alistair, it should be at the bottom, uh, a green button. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Uh, good, to, good to hear you speak again. Um, no, I'm not being allowed to share screen. Um, do you... Do you have the previous presentation? I can talk to that. There was one slide missing from it. You mean the uh, Fritz? No, um, Ian had provided you our presentation material. material. Just a second, I'm loading it. Okay. okay, thank you. I can speak to that. There was one additional slide, but I can talk to it anyway. Here we go. 
Hello, sir. Yep, I've got it. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Uh, it's interesting that we see quite a diversity of opinion on the small wind market around the world from our colleagues in, in China and Japan, and also Mike's extremely positive <clears throat> view of the US market. Uh, I also attended and Rise Energy as a member now of Distributed Wind Energy Association, and we're very supportive of that. We've also recently joined the Global Wind Council as well, because we believe that the industry needs to drive these solutions into the marketplace. Um, the other point that I would like to make, and we do concur, is that there is a need for leadership in the industry, and too many um, uh, horror stories have been involved in the small wind business. The UK market, which I was going to speak to for a little bit of the talk today, is is a success story and a failure in two ways. Um, we as Rise Energy have acquired a number of technology companies. So we acquired the Heritage uh, Gaia wind business, which had 2000 turbines very successfully installed and coming back in our Japanese colleagues uh, statement there, that turbine itself, the GW133 had been certified in Denmark and has more than 20 years operation history. So it's an extremely reliable and proven safe operation of turbines. So, you know, we take we take challenge to the fact that you can't prove safety. And of course, in Denmark, it's a special market. It loves wind. And uh, the the what is now called RG11 is classified as a house turbine. So it has to be installed very close to the property. And, and it has a great success in that market, which is a medium speed market. Um, in the UK market, we went through the feed-in tariff program, which really stimulated our industry, but it was too short. And at that time, energy prices were not as they are now. And when the feed-in tariffs ended, the subsidies uh, meant that many of the companies went out of business. So really, we have a very limited manufacturing base in the UK. And over the past few years, uh, quite a bit of our business was involved in repowering of failed turbines. So again, it, it builds on the story of the technology being forced into the market, not being properly certified, not being properly tested on safety and functional tests, and going into the market on too early a basis. Um, can we just move through the slides, please? Or So what we see as a market is that wind technology is our core activity, but we do believe that solar and wind are uh, mutually beneficial to each other, not competitive with each other. Everybody talks about the kilowatt rating of a machine, but nobody talks about the AEP. And the UK is a lovely market. In the very far south, in, in the home counties, we have good solar irradiation and medium low wind speed. But in the north of our country, we have almost no sunlight for several months of the year. And we have class one wind speeds. So when you look at, at talking about a market, you have to look at the nuances of that market and how wind and solar are, are compatible with each other and complementary to each other. In addition to that, we all have to face facts that wind turbines are, are rotating equipment. They're under relatively high stress and service is really important. So localization of support for customers, again, we are involved with supporting a number of, of companies, turbines who are not manufactured by us. We're happy to support them because we believe it's good for the industry. But to be able to meet the requirements of the industry, you need a product range. And too many of the companies that are involved in small wind are single product companies. And they're not, they don't have critical mass. They're force fitting products, which are either not suitable for the wind speed or not suitable for the customer's application because it's all they have in terms of a product. So 
one of the differentiators we believe is to have a product range which allows us to deal with the various classifications of wind speed and to have those products uh, properly accredited and certified. And, and that's one of the reasons we are now entering the US market because of, as Mike said, the Inflation Reduction Act is giving those stimuluses and the CIP program, which we have not secured an award for, also stimulates investment into the technology. So with our portfolio of technology, plus the certification, plus the globalization of manufacturing, we believe that we are positioned well in that sector and look to see that growth. Next slide, please. I don't want to talk about the applications because the applications are so vast. I mean, you heard Fritz talk about telecom and, and, a, and a million towers being the opportunity. Uh, we've just signed a contract on a strategic supply agreement for a thousand wind turbines into that sector over a three year period. So when you talk about growth in the industry, it's very niched in terms of the application. We interestingly went to DWEA and we listened in awe at the power costs in the United States, which of course does need the subsidies for turbines and other technologies to be competitive against what is an incredibly low grid power cost in the United States. When you compare that to what we are seeing now in Europe, then there is no comparison between the US market, which is very much a market in its own right, and, and what we're now seeing in Europe, where grid parity, I, I, again, it's not a well-defined term, but it's easy now for self-generation of power to be below the cost of purchasing from the grid. In the old days, when we were talking about feed-in tariffs, we we're talking about selling into the grid. Now our focus is very much on displacing the grid and people being in control of their own cost structure. Next slide, please. We have the installed base of around 4,000 turbines worldwide. Um, we're also quite an acquisitive company, so we're looking to expand that by acquiring some of the other smaller wind turbine companies, and that will expand our geographical footprint. We're also in the process of doing technology exchange into India so that we will be localization, localizing manufacturing in India because India is very much a market that's uh, made in India. It can be designed in Europe, but it needs to be made in India. And we look to localize as much and create that in-country value where our customers are based and, and service our customers to international standards, but with local cultural overlays. And, and as Mike knows, we'll probably be doing the same in the United States. So I'm glad to hear them encouraging us to come into the US market uh, because it's a big pie there and it needs more people to, to, to be sitting at that table. Um, with 4,000 installed turbines, it's relatively easy then to create that critical mass and, and in each country we provide the local service operations or we've got local service accredited partners. Can we go to the next um, slide, please? So in the UK market, the repowering was the biggest sector. So when you look at a number of the companies that had decent sized installed bases, whether they be CNF, whether they be Avoco, um, who had many hundreds of turbines installed and, and Chinese turbines as well, who were installed in the feed-in tariff period, most of the, many of those turbines have failed in service. But the repowering process within the UK market, where we have around 10,000 um, installed turbines as a number, which is all documented through the MCS accreditation system, uh, which we are a member of, these turbines um, are allowed to be repowered because at the end of the day, the feed-in tariff is applicable and you can get that revenue for a further 10 years from today when you're repowering existing turbines. And, and we have purchased turbines from Bergie, which have been used and repowered an existing Bergie unit um, in those particular cases, lightning strikes, for example. But where we're looking at companies that are no longer in business, those turbines were often custom turbine designs and were not able to be 
re refurbished or or restored to their performance. Therefore, we've done replacements and repowered with the proven technology uh, of of the G11 or the E machines into those, uh, even up to the point of the C4 machines, which were 50 kilowatts, which we've repowered also with our E60. Um, we, we talk about grids as if it's available everywhere. Well, even in a country like the United Kingdom, it's not. And even if it is available, it's not available at a competitive price. So when you're looking at upgrading of things like critical infrastructure, uh, communication networks, you've got uh, mountaintop locations where for a 10, 10 kilowatt grid connection, the power companies are looking for over a million sterling to provide you a 10 kilowatt link. In those cases, self-generation of power is a no-brainer because your capital cost and your operating costs will never ever cost you the same as just your grid connection. So it's all about having resilient, sustainable and reliable power with very high service level uptimes in those types of markets. And like the US, we're also seeing a drive towards community power in the UK, whereby self-generation of power by communities is being accepted. And it's also being supported now by government policy. We're having a review of planning applications. I saw somebody talking about 14 months for a planning application for wind in the UK and Nottingham. It is very localized and it is done by the both the power companies for grid connection and also by the councils for planning applications. But typically we will see a statutory response in 90 days for any planning application. And we can move very quickly in terms of delivery of the turbines into the market. And again, I come back to the fact that these are not subsidized opportunities. These are competing with grid and displacing grid where the customers generate their own power for self-consumption. And that for us is the future. And, you know, as I said, in a country like the UK, and we forget that the Edinburgh, which is the capital of Scotland, is in the middle of the Hudson Bay um, in terms of, of equivalent location. We have in many, many areas, no winter sunshine, but we have excellent wind resource. So we see the market opportunities. And just finally, I'd like to say that in the export markets, we've seen a huge upturn. And this is all about um, the world changing and equalization of opportunity and increasing the quality of life standards. We do see opportunities in a lot of developing countries. Um, and especially our opportunities are ones where there is good wind resource. Uh, we've just done a strategic contract with Suez Canal Authority for provision of full hybrid renewables for their <coughs> um, green canal strategy for all of their command and control infrastructure. And to be honest, in those environments where you've got an average wind speed of seven and a half to eight and a half meters per second, you need a quality product that's certified, that's safe. And in those cases, we're also integrating it with solar energy storage, single phase, three phase inverters with backup generation for super critical applications. So we're very bullish about the market. Um, we, we are looking at the global market, not just a local market. And we do see um, very specific regional opportunities. Somebody mentioned earlier on about European Union. Um, we're no longer part of the European Union as Brits, but in Spain, there's a significant subsidy. In Greece, we have the feed-in tariff market there for turbines of less than 60 kilowatt. We invested heavily into the Japanese feed-in tariff program for the 55 yen um, opportunity. But unfortunately, as our, our speaker said earlier on, we didn't see the return on that. We still hope that there are opportunities for quality products in the Japan market. We fully support Mike's activities in terms of the Inflation Reduction Act canvassing and campaigning um, in the United States. And we, we, are, we are believers in that. And we do see a lot of niche opportunities where the wind resources available for wind and wind solar hybrids to be a very important part of the green transition moving forward.
So um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak and I'm open to take questions, not just on UK market, but on any of the other markets where we're involved. Yeah, thank you very much, Alistair. That was, I think, another very insightful presentation of where we are with small wind energy uh, with regard to the UK, but indeed also far beyond that. And I just uh, uh, took note of, uh, you, you talked about self-consumption as an important market segment and also those uh, areas on the planet which have a winter with less sunshine. Do we have any questions or comments from our audience here? If that is not the case, then again, thank you very much. And I understand you can also stay with us. So in case other questions are coming up, uh, we may still come back to that. And uh, then let's go back to a little bit to the east. And it's my pleasure now to welcome Dr. Chami Hossain from India, who is the technical chair of our association. Uh, a very long a term experience with uh, wind energy in general, with all types of uh, wind power. Chami, it's my pleasure to have you with us and presenting about the uh, latest developments for small wind turbines in India. Yes, Stephen, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so good day, everyone. Good morning, evening, you know, we are people like uh, Mike Berge from US, maybe early morning for him. <clears throat> and uh, it's uh, very interesting to see so much uh, interest, in fact, in this uh, webinar uh, in small wind uh, uh, all over the world and uh, many developments uh, taking place. And uh, I will uh, rather briefly talk about uh, the developments in India. And uh, so I will share my screen here and uh, then we can see. Okay. So can you see the screen? Yes, it's just not yet in presentation mode. So we see the... You can see the presentation? Yes, but if you click on presentation on the at the bottom line, then we see only your the slide. A little bit to the right. Right, right. Okay, yes. yeah, 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 I got it. Right? Yes, super. Okay. Let me go to the first slide. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, in India, uh, there, we have a long history, you know, of uh, working on wind energy. And uh, in the mainstream wind energy, we have uh, a fairly large capacity, uh, something like 42 gigawatt. And overall, uh, wind energy is very important in the uh, energy mix today. And now the government is talking about uh, uh, some very large uh, offshore projects. Again, they will be in several gigawatts. But at the same time, we have had a lot of activities in the small wind sector. And uh, this goes back to many years. And uh, I will discuss some of them, uh, some of the activities there and uh, what is the status today. Uh, yeah, so in the small wind uh, energy in the Indian context, uh, we uh, normally assume that a small wind turbine is something like uh, 10 kilowatt and works in a standalone mode also with solar or battery. So these will be hybrid systems, but normally not connected to the grid. Uh, this is a general understanding. There is no well-defined way of describing it uh, like this. And uh, we have had earlier in World Wind Energy Association a lot of discussion whether uh, you know a wind turbine of one megawatt or less could be uh, you know classified as a small wind turbine. But typically what comes to mind and what is understood also in India is uh, that it's typically between one to 
10 kilowatt uh, range of uh, wind turbines and probably not even uh, not even 100 kilowatt then uh, so there was a, uh, a government program with the small wind turbines and uh, many of these systems were being uh, set up and installed in uh, remote areas particularly areas like northeast uh, where, where far flung areas himalayas uh, also islands andamans and all these things but somehow this uh, uh, program seems to have come to an end uh, either in 2018 or 2019 and there is very little happening on that front in you know in terms of a programmatic approach uh, to uh, have these systems installed in addition to these small wind turbine there are also you know uh, a range of wind turbines which are grid connected wind turbines which are less than one megawatt and this as i said we had discussed many times whether we should have a, a, a small wind uh, category which uh, goes right up to uh, one megawatt because we have in this category wind turbines quite a few uh, large number in 250 kilowatt capacity 230 kilowatt and then 500 600 700 750 kilowatt i think uh, maybe we we have something like uh, uh, 1000 megawatts of capacity which is uh, of wind turbines less than one megawatt but they are not standalone system. They are not distributed in that sense and they are connected to the grid. So uh, this is for your information. In terms of potential for small wind in India, I mean, there is a very large potential. There is a vast potential and uh, somehow this needs to be tapped. If you look at the coastal areas, we have something like 7,500 kilometer of coastline which is a very vast coastline. And on that coastline, there will be uh, innumerable load centers uh, where we can uh, supply electricity from wind. And on the coast, it is always windy, particularly for this kind of uh, wind systems. And they can be combined with solar and batteries and things like that. Then we have islands where we can do these uh, systems. So uh, Andamans, you know, Lakshadweep Islands, Sagar Islands. And they have been tried out also. Uh, uh, some systems have been set up, uh, particularly in Sagar Island, I was myself involved uh, in these uh, areas. Why I'm giving these uh, applications is, of course, you all understand uh, the possible applications that can be there for small wind. But India is such a diverse country and so vast that uh, it's worthwhile, you know, looking at what kind of, uh, you know, at least at a very high level, broad level, uh, what kind of applications there might be. So there can be a lot of applications in the Himalayas because load centers can be very far and it does not make sense to take the grid to these load centers. Now, though it is said that we have 100% rural electrification, but even close to cities like Bombay, there are tribal areas where, uh, you know, uh, there is no uh, no grid. So, because they may be so remote that it doesn't make sense to uh, extend the grid there. And in such areas, you know, uh, it makes sense to have uh, small wind uh, uh, systems with uh, whatever else. So, remote load centers, tribal areas, there are a lot of tribal areas in India where, you know, uh, we, we could supply electricity through uh, wind. Then telecom, of course, somebody mentioned that uh, uh, is one application. In urban settings, now uh, it is coming up and uh, many, uh, not many, but a few rooftop systems uh, uh, I can see have been uh, set up here and there. Uh, it, it does make sense. It, it, is, it has uh, you know, some, uh, some stakeholders who are interested in such uh, systems. Then, Water pumping and you know agricultural and irrigation and drinking water, resorts, hotels, plantations. Then strategic installations, particularly army, defense, uh, you know, oil and gas, uh, could be other kind of strategic installations where uh, wind can uh, make sense. Uh, these photographs, uh, you know, I'm just giving you a bit of a historical perspective because today uh, this small wind business has. Uh, sort of stagnated or has come to a sort of a standstill, though of course it is 
not totally uh, you know uh, out of business they are doing business but they would prefer uh, some better support so in terms of historical perspective you know you see this uh, wind turbines in sagar islands this ones and uh, these were set, set up sometime in the 90s and uh, there is a company there was a company based out of oroville in uh, uh, you know in puducherry area and they made this uh, wind turbine and they have installed it there so this was a good program you know where uh, quite a bit of uh, these kind of systems were set up so they have been set up in uh, sagar island they have been set up in uh, sundarban area where which is environmentally very sensitive and uh, they have been set up uh, uh, a, a, uh, this you can see is a 2 megawatt wind farm but this wind farm is again connected to a diesel generating set and a mini grid so there is no uh, uh, you know national grid or that kind of thing uh, functional over there and uh, it has worked i, I hope it still works uh, out there uh, it was a mnre project just to give you uh, some perspective i don't have many photographs uh, now from ladakh region where i was involved and we did some uh, studies on you know uh, selecting sites and then we did more studies on uh, and in fact we were working with the bergi wind turbines i don't know if mike bergi would remember or recollect that uh, we had uh, a few wind turbines which were to be installed in uh, ladakh region uh, we did a, uh, you know this is another paper that i did at that time on microprocessor based Uh, demand side scheduling for standalone wind electric system this is again 1988 so uh, you see long time back a lot of work was done but somewhere uh, we seem to be lo losing the steam somewhat uh, so the current status where are we today uh, the last figure for stall capacity officially that i have is something like 3.3 megawatt and this relates to 2018 period there has been a a small wind turbine there was a lot of interest in small wind and even today there is and the people who work in this field are very very enthusiastic and uh, you know uh, very very committed and they set up a association which was called uh, small wind turbine association but somehow it uh, has not been very active or effective and uh, there is no collection of data that is you know one could relate to uh, there is no data available at the moment how many wind small wind systems have been set up in the country so uh, i talked to people individually within the government and outside the government and it seems there is not clearly a focal point in the government where you can you know relate to this kind of development uh, 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 somehow and uh, while talking to various people i guess that today we may have something like a uh, total capacity of 5 megawatt uh, small wind turbines installed in the country and these are all less than 10 kilowatt type because uh, for the larger uh, uh, segment within this small wind uh, which is uh, uh, 10 kilowatt to almost uh, uh, 200 300 kilowatts and up to 1 megawatt Uh, we have a fairly large capacity and uh, maybe uh, we have something like a 1000 megawatt uh, installed here is a photograph of uh, you know on some complex this kind of uh, uh, system and it looks very innovative uh, different kind of system which has been uh, installed and uh, so innovation continues and these people i talk to them are active they are marketing their products within india outside india they are doing collaborations technical collaborations and joint ventures uh, with organizations outside so i understand that burgi is also active in india and uh, there is a korean uh, venture uh, which is in, uh, active and i will talk about some of these uh, developments so there are a number of uh, small wind turbine manufacturers and some of them have patented new ideas for example this is called a katadi wind turbine machine and uh, this is like this this is a vertical axis wind turbine <coughs> which has been patented and uh, they are setting up uh, these kind of uh, systems this is the one i already showed you it's on the 
rooftop of a building, such systems are being installed. And this is yet another uh, kind of system. So in this small range, which I told you, there are a few uh, uh, manufacturers. These are the grid connected types. And uh, there's one company which is called the Siva uh, company. They make 250 kilowatt uh, wind turbines, 225 kilowatt wind turbines. There is Extol, which makes one megawatt uh, wind turbine. And in fact, I was involved with them in uh, setting up uh, this machine in Turkey. Then there is uh, PASL. Uh, there is a PASL private limited or something based out of Gujarat. Uh, they do 800 kilowatt wind turbines. Then there is Pioneer Windcon, which is also doing something like 250 kilowatt uh, or higher capacities, but below uh, one megawatt. And these are all grid connected. Some of them, uh, these wind turbines are included in the, uh, what is called the revised list of uh, wind turbine uh, manufacturers called RLMM list uh, of the government. So uh, they uh, do get the benefit in the sense that anybody uh, can install these uh, wind turbines and get the benefits that are associated with such large wind turbines. That is, they can sign a PPA, they can get the grid connection and things like that. But at the same time, there are wind turbines which are not included in that RLM list. So they have uh, difficulties uh, in how to move uh, forward because these are grid connected uh, kind of systems. So uh, this is one area which needs some attention. Now there is a range of wind turbines I felt, which is a missing, missing range. We have on one hand something like uh, one to 10 kilowatt kind of systems. Maybe we have more, we have 30, 40 kilowatt, that's all. But, uh, and on this, uh, this is on the standalone size. And then up to 250 kilowatt, we don't have much. So, uh, and there is a very clearly a good market for uh, these kind of uh, systems for small scale industry, for, uh, you know, rural electrification, for commercial establishments. And uh, these could be connected to the grid or operate on a standalone mode, but nobody's at the moment, as far as I know, uh, making or uh, marketing such uh, uh, systems. It will be worthwhile to uh, look at this range, which is not there. Things keep happening, and I just picked this out from uh, you know uh, Google search that some young engineer he built a wind turbine that can generate both electricity and water, something. And uh, this is uh, a news from 2020. So uh, things are happening and people are interested in doing uh, interesting things with wind and small wind. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the wind turbine uh, manufacturers. And I think it's called Andromeda uh, wind turbine. Uh, and they are very active. And I think they are participating in a uh, exhibition uh, somewhere. Some other projects, you know, these kind of things are being installed. Uh, there is a vertical axis wind turbine uh, being installed here. There used to be a company and is still, I think, active. It's uh, called Unitron, a uh, small team turbine manufacturer. They have a track record of almost uh, uh, 20 years and they make uh, wind turbines in the range of up to five kilowatt. And uh, I know they have installed uh, wind turbines in Bangladesh. They've installed in uh, uh, Thailand and maybe many other countries. Uh, they have even set up uh, small, uh, small wind turbine wind farms. So uh, uh, interesting kind of work uh, they have done. And uh, they are one of the uh, companies which have a uh, reasonable track record in doing such uh, systems and they're based out of Pune. There's yet another company called Spitzen Energy and they're also very active and uh, they supply uh, wind turbines to government establishments. There is something called uh, corporate social responsibility. Uh, every uh, company has to do some 2% of uh, their uh, investments in uh, corporate social responsibility and uh, they do projects under that uh, segment and uh, uh, quite a few systems they have installed and are installing all the time. There's another company, Wish, and I could look at their website and just captured it and 
people can go and uh, you know just google it and find out what what all they are doing and you can get their uh, you know systems this is the it was not andromeda it was archimedes so this is the archimedes system and uh, uh, you can go to their website also now in in summary you know we have had a lot of track record in uh, doing small wind turbines and uh, we have been doing it from the very beginning so almost when the first wind farms were being set up uh, at the same time in 1985 88 uh, we were also looking at uh, small wind turbines and a uh, lot of initiative has gone into it many government programs the kind of things that i've shown you sagar island the kind of things uh, that we have done in the Himalayas. Uh, uh, all over the country, there were systems which were being installed. Of course, in terms of capacity, in terms of uh, turnover, in terms of financial outlay, these are always much smaller than a uh, grid connected uh, kind of a uh, wind activity. But uh, nevertheless, they were very interesting uh, projects and uh, initiatives that were being taken. And there is much interest in the technology transfer, innovation, and manufacturing, in spite of the fact there is little profit, profitability on scale. You see, uh, uh, I, I have spoken to many of these uh, manufacturers, and I can understand that they struggle a lot. The range of wind turbines, uh, you know, zero kilowatt to thousand kilowatt, very clearly need a sort of a recognition as a dish segment in the form of government policy programs and mechanisms. No doubt it was there till 2018, 17, and, but now it is not there. So government really need, needs to relook and see how to revive this uh, initiative and uh, take it forward. And uh, uh, definitely it has uh, very good potential and make sense uh, uh, in certain applications, more sense than the you know, uh, other kind of uh, uh, systems. So uh, for this, there should be some focal point within the ministry for such technologies, which was there earlier and probably has been, uh, you know, uh, you know, sort of forgotten or something. So this kind of uh, thing should be looked at. Uh, and uh, some focal point, at least, uh, DAS, uh, where a person is not only uh, looking at the program approach, policies and things like that, but also collecting information from uh, various manufacturers and collating it. Because today it is very difficult to figure out how many installations are there, where are they, and all these things. And uh, so we do need uh, some such thing to begin with in the first place. And uh, these smaller wind turbines of less than five kilowatt, they can be treated at par with solar rooftop and given the same kind of incentives, which means you can have uh, net metering and you can have similar kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, facilities which are available for a uh, solar rooftop because you can have small systems on the rooftops uh, as well. And at the same time, there can be open access. Open access means that you can uh, set up a system, say 100 kilowatt, uh, 120 kilowatt somewhere and supply to a load, which may be a little far, you know, through the uh, network. And while this kind of uh, uh, this kind of mechanism is available at a, a larger level of wind farms, but at a smaller level, this should be activated so that you know uh, various uh, uh, you know uh, entrepreneurs they can get into this uh, business because then they can see the market and it would make sense. And then the micro grids and mini grids, uh, this should be uh, looked at. So. Though very little happening in India at the moment in terms of uh, small wind, but uh, I gathered all this information to see what we can recommend. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Jami, for a very comprehensive uh, and really giving a great overview um, about the Indian situation. Um, now, do we have questions from the audience? I'd like now to be brief in, in the interest of time. Um, that seems not the case. And again, thank you very much. And again, uh, let me mention this again now, we're recording this meeting. So all the presentations can be re-viewed uh, uh, 
on our in our YouTube channel in, in, in the next couple of days. So thank you, Chami. Then I have the pleasure to invite our next speaker. And it's the only speaker today from the Southern Hemisphere, Hector Pagani from the Argentine Wind Energy Association, who will present us what is happening in Argentina, um, one of the major markets for larger wind turbines, but of course has also many remote areas. And we now look forward to hearing from you. Um, a great welcome. Good morning to Argentina. Hector, the floor is yours. So if you please unmute yourself. So that we can hear you. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Ah, hello. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, uh, this webinar. Mm. Mm. Yes, super. The from the national sense career uh, out in 2022 uh, is a PR that we are uh, 46 million 44,703 Argentine. The total number of home in the country is a 17 million eight thousand five seven hundred eleven. The 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 particular home seventy uh, million uh, seven eighty thousand two hundred ten and. Uh, is at home uh, 25,500 at home. The distribution for uh, Argentina rural population is in this part, and the gray dots are population up to. 500 inhabitants and the green one from 500 to 1000 and the red one from 1000 to 2 inhabitants, 2000 inhabitants. Familias without access to electricity, 120,000. Argentina rural families still do not have access to electricity. This is the distribution of the persons rural household with energy for province. National manufacturer of low power wind turbine. In 2015, uh, 80 manufacturers of uh, wind turbine from 0.3 to 4.5 kilowatt. And in uh, 2023, nine manufacturing from 0 0.3 to 4.5 kilowatt. Several reasons with this has happened. First, the economic crisis in Argentine. Two, the COVID-19. Three, the low scala of demand for this. The National Wind Turbine Manufacturing in Argentina 
in actualidad, in actuality, there are nine uh, manufacturer 0.3 to 4.5 kilowatt. And two manufacturer 1.5 megawatt and two megawatt. In the middle, Tiru manufacture 30 to 500 kilowatt. This last power are necessary to develop and distribute energy in the country. This month, a company from the province of Córdoba signed the representation of 200. Uh, uh, Five kilowatt wind turbine on uh, one uh, uh, one company to India. Small wind turbine. The small wind turbines could be developed in this way. Uh, and at throw permit in rural areas, in area with more to the social resident through law, uh, law 27,424 on distributed energy. The permit, renewable energy in rural markets project. This objective is the electrification of the dispersed rural population and public service institutions through the use of the renewable energy technology. The project is financed with loan from the, the World Bank and other uh, parts. The permit is responsible for subsidizing the installation of the equipment by absorbing this high cost of the initial investment. 1,500 wind turbine installed to 1 to 1.5 kilowatt installed for permit in Patagonia. The red of country photovoltaic kits. The reality of Permer. It goes well in the middle and northern and northern zone of Argentina, where there is a lot of solar resource. In the southern part of our country, which has wind resource, one thousand five hundred wind turbine. Uh, of one to one point six kilowatt were installed. However, it did work well since people were not trained for its maintenance. Law, law for regime for the promotion of the tribute generation of renewable energy. User generator, the user of the public distribution service that the energy generation, equipment for renewable source. The purpose of the fund will be to apply the trust asset for granting of loan, incentive, warranty, the marking of capital contribution and the acquisition of other financial instruments. All of them I made the implementation of the three generation system from renewable source. The user generator will receive the feed in tariff for each kilowatt hour in delivery of the distribution network equal to pay to CAMESA. Lower 
than that pie to be used for this consumption. Truth, the fund for will be able to generate self-consumption more 10%. Truth, fund for development of the true generation, for this today certificate tax credit of 0 0.4 dollar for what maximum uh, 26,600 uh, dollars for system. Igual, varia sign, the value granted is in Argentine pesos, and this is the value month by month. Maximum power to be injected to megawatt. In 2022, uh, 1,072 generation user and uh, 18 megawatt installed. Very poor so far. <clears throat> the regimen for community distributed generation. The community generation user, several user <clears throat> with independent supply point, sever electrically by a distribution company. They might generate a different point of consumption. This is very important. They may generate equal or greater than 20% of the sum of all consumption of all users. So far, we province have this regime. It can only grow in a small and medium enterprise that today pay $108 for megawatt hour. In the wind energy, wind turbine larger than uh, 50 kilowatt are needed. They are not produced in uh, in the country. Why is the true energy law not working in Argentina? Can only generate for consumption more than percent. The scale price of surplus energy generated is lower than the purchase price of normal energy. Of the full consumer pay $22 for megawatt. It can uh, only grow a small and medium enterprise that today pay uh, $108 for megawatt. Uh, there are uh, say so and small wind turbine with a capacity of 6.5 megawatts installed in our country. According to that, from the Industrial Technology Institute 2016. Now, Mardat is lacking. <clears throat> Why is the installation of small wind turbine not growing? High adquisition of installation cost. High maintenance, maintenance cost due to distance and access in the rural areas. In non-rural areas, the cost of energy is subsidized. Where it can grow with turbine of Martin. 30 kilowatts are needed, which are now produced in the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hector, for giving us an overview. I think what you presented is indeed uh, in line with what we heard from others. So this topic of uh, small wind turbines is discussed together with distributed generations of consumption and also community uh, ownership. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? 
So I don't see any uh, hands raised. Then you still stay with us. Please have a look at the chat, whether there are questions coming up. Um, thank you so much for sharing the first-hand information from Argentina. And then I have the pleasure now to invite our colleagues from uh, IRENA to share with us their viewpoints. And we have here two speakers, Kayatri Nair, I hope that I pronounced your name correctly, and Chaidev Davi, both from the International Renewable Energy Agency. Um, we've been working together in the past for small wind. We had uh, always speakers from the agency at our own. We still had these physical conferences and it's my great pleasure that we could kind of reconnect um, I visited uh, your office in Bonn very recently, and uh, as a result, I, I we have the pleasure now to welcome you to this webinar and share Arena's view. And we're very much very curious how far small wind is on the agenda of Arena. So, if I may Thank hand you. over to you. Thank you very much, Stefan, and a very good afternoon to you all. Uh, my name is Jadev Davle. Um, I'm, I'm an associate program um, officer. Uh, with um, Irina. Um, Stefan, could you kindly allow me to share my screen, please? Um, yes, thank you. you yeah, so I can just put our PowerPoint. Uh, we'll try to be very uh, succinct and brief with our um, presentation because my colleague Gayatri has another um, meeting. Uh, I'll just, uh, just give me a minute, please. I need to hide this. Uh, same like Mike now. Yeah, exactly. No, I just need to hide the. I know how to do it. It's just that this is not. Um, I think you need to end slideshow. Uh, yeah. Just give me a minute because. Um, yeah, I this this um this top bar is not um not going away. <laughs> so I know exactly what to do, but it's just not allowing me to switch. Let me see if there's something I can do here. Um, no, okay, wait, let me just do something. Now it works. Can you hear me, colleagues? Yes, looks good now. Okay, sorry, um, I just disconnected my my screen. Um, now I'm having a bit of a technical glitch over here. I do not know why. <laughs> um. Just give me a minute, colleagues. I'm very sorry about this. This is a bit of an unforeseen uh, event. Oh, God. Just give me a minute. I'm very sorry about this. Um, okay, now I should be able to do this. Hold on. Um, Okay. Okay, super. So I think we're back on on uh, on full screen now, and there's no present review. So yeah, just to make our our point very quickly, I think the objective of this presentation is to give a very quick overview on our perspective on small wind um, in the global renewable energy landscape. And I think my colleague Gayatri will touch on how it can be applied um, in the uh, small island developing um, states, um, because that's something that we haven't seen in at least the research we've come across so far. So for those of you who are not familiar with um, IRENA, uh, we're the International Renewable Energy um, Agency, and we were founded in 2011. Um, our headquarters is based in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. Um, however, Gayatri and myself are based in Bonn, Germany, where we have our Innovation and Technology Center. Um, to the right, you can see our member states that we have currently so far. So in 2011, we had about 85 countries who were members of IDENA. And as of today, uh, in terms of last year, we have about 168 <clears throat> countries. So our membership has really grown a lot. Um, and generally speaking, our mandate is to promote the widespread adoption of uh, all forms of renewable, renewable energy. And below you can see the ones that are 
are mentioned and obviously today's focus is on wind. So just to set the scene uh, with regards to, you know, the necessity of renewable energy. So I think there's a consensus that we need to decarbonize our different sectors in the world to ensure that we try to limit the impacts of climate change um, globally. And to the left, you can see an, uh, sort of an infographic on the different kinds of actions that need to be taken between certain time blocks um, uh, to ensure that these objectives are met. So we sort of um, have in, in two categories between 2018 and 2030, and then in a more long-term perspective from 2031 to 2050. And on the top, you can basically see the sort of summary actions that we have. So essentially in this current phase that we are, right, we are in right now, there's a need to ensure that we increase the uh, integration of different renewable energy sources in um, different sectors uh, globally. And then moving forward, obviously, is to, to sort of refine the technologies and ensure that they, they become a mainstream when it comes to meeting energy supply and, and demand. So, um, essentially, I think the, the main um, objective that we have is to ensure that we promote these renewable energy technologies through different means. And I think one of the key uh, facets we, that we try to uh, promote is the, the development of comprehensive policies that can then be enabled, implemented by different stakeholders to ensure that these uh, technologies are successfully implemented in the energy ecosystem. Um, and I just also wanted to highlight the point that has been mentioned before that when it comes to renewable energy, um, uh, variable renewable energy sources, namely solar PV and wind, have a great uh, a potential to contribute to the attainment of, of decarbonization goals. And according to our analysis and, and, and forecast, we do assume, we do expect that by 2050, about 73% of the electricity capacity can be you know, uh, uh, attributed to variable renewable energy sources. And um, for this, obviously, there needs to be new policies and measures such as renewable energy targets, tax incentives, and energy pricing mechanisms to ensure that uh, uh, these technologies are more mainstreamed um, as time progresses. Uh, furthermore, we also do envision that at least an investment of one trillion US dollars will be, re will be required by 2030 to ensure the renewables are, you know, a part of the energy ecosystem moving forward. On small wind, um, I just also want to just be um, um, transparent with you all that, you know, IDENA really has, doesn't have any internal resources when it comes to small wind analysis. So we've had to also consult external resources uh, when presenting uh, the slides. So on the left, uh, I summarized the sort of global trends across. Um, so um, as has been mentioned, you know, between uh, 2030, 2030 and 2021, uh, there was a cumulative capacity of 1,800 megawatts of small wind with around 40 megawatts being added in 2021. This, however, is expected to increase moving forward. So there's a, a difference of, you know, an increase of 1,800 megawatts additionally by 2026. Uh, that's for forecasted. And as of 2022, the, the valuation of the market for small wind is around $275 million. Um, so that's what we've come across to our literature research. And I think um, on the below um, part of this info of this graphic, I think it sort of uh, concurs with the previous presentations that have been um, have been made by uh, the experts where um, North America, I think what we've come across um, has is the most dominant say, region uh, globally and the United States uh, definitely is a leader um, in this area. With regards to Asia, uh, we do envision that China was still a very important role in the small wind um, supply chain. And they were actually a big contributor to the capacity that was, that was added in 2021 with 33 megawatts. And Europe also uh, can also be, be a, a big hub for this uh, for this area, and we do see positive trends in, in Germany, Denmark, Italy, and UK um, uh, sort of being the drivers in the European market. Uh, when it comes to the the rationales for small wind um, turbines, uh, I guess there are four factors that I think are contributing to the market growth in in small wind. The first being low capital cost because of the smaller sizes of projects, so therefore it's more attractive to small developers and, and consumers. There's obviously an increasing interest in renewable energy, so more investments are being made in these technologies. And I think as was mentioned by our colleagues in the United States, policies like the IRA definitely are showing that there is the, where there is a will, there is a way. So, you know, investments can be made um, in, in these technologies um, should the environment be conducive for that. 
There are innovative applications of small wind technologies such as hybrid street lighting systems that are sort of you know making the case for you know exploring this technology further. And I think it also is a, it's very useful in providing rural communities or communities that do not have access to the grid with options to ensure that they have energy security. Some of the key considerations, however, that need to be considered when um, uh, improving the business case for small wind turbines is one, as I mentioned uh, in previous presentations, that there's a need to do more research on how small wind turbines can improve their energy conversion capacities because there, there's still a lot of room for improvement over there. Furthermore, there's also um, work to be done with regards to improving the economic viability of small wind turbines, and this largely focuses on the costs that are costs that are associated with regards to the materials used for uh, making these turbines and ensuring that supply chain disruptions don't, you know, cause um, prices to increase. And last but not least, it's also important that there be an increased contribution of small wind turbines to uh, electrical um, ecosystems because they do have a role, and I think that that's where um, more research needs to be done to see how these technologies can be integrated into the grid. Storage uh, potential could be one way by which wind turbines can be introduced onto the grid. So this is what we have so far um, in terms of our research and the references are, are presented on the slide. Um, and now I would like to hand it over to my, to my colleague, Dietri Nair, who I think will make a, a small intervention on how this technology can be used in small island developing states. Um, since uh, because we didn't really come across that, at least in our in our, our own research, but she has some ideas, so I'll hand it over to Gayatri. So Gayatri, the floor is yours, and please let me know when I should go to the next slide. Can you hear me? Well, it looks all fine. Or she yes. is unmuted. I can't hear Gayatri, that's why. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just checking her status. She looks unmuted, but the strange thing is she, her camera seems to be on, but I cannot see her. So Gayatri, is there a problem with the connection? Seems so. Okay. Um, I mean, in the interest of time, I can, you know, do my best to <laughs> explain her slides while she tries to um, to get connected again. So these are some slides that uh, that she prepared um, on the on the importance of small wind turbines for um, um, a small island developing states. So essentially, uh, we thought this was a gap that uh, we uh, sort of identified in our own, own own literature research. And I think first thing is what are the challenges challenges when it comes for large wind large wind installation. So sometimes, uh, you know, in, in in small island cases, there the, the land mass is not there to support these large wind um, installations, and therefore it can be a limiting factor. Sometimes it also has something to do with tourism because the tourism is a big uh, uh, factor for uh, for the sector. So obviously, having large turbines can dissuade people from visiting these countries, depending on their perspective. And also, most importantly, when it comes to the logistics of supply chains and the installations required for these um, big turbines, uh, it, it can be difficult because of the geographic distances between these small island uh, states. So therefore, it's a bit of a, a limiting factor. And, therefore, and furthermore, the big turbines can also create noise pollution and shadows, which can be, again, are not pleasing to the, to the local uh, communities that are there. So therefore, this, these are some of the challenges that large wind installations face um, when it comes to the island context. Um, and therefore, I think you know, small wind uh, uh, systems could be an att attractive solution uh, for um, uh, for these communities. So, how do we define um, small wind turbines? So, according to our research, you know, small wind turbines basically have a, a, a sort of a sweeping area of 200 square meters um, or less. Uh, what we have come across in terms of classification is that we, up to 100 kilowatts is what we define as small wind turbines. And then going from 101 kilowatts to a megawatt is mid with mid-sized wind turbines. And anything beyond a megawatt is then what we define as large scale wind turbines. Um, there are some residential applications when it comes to having um, uh, wind turbines that have a capacity between 400 watts and the 100 kilowatts. And uh, apparently from, from, the, from the research, you know, a 1.5 kilowatt wind turbine would be able to meet the demand of 300 kilowatt hours per month. Um, and uh, if the location was to have 
six meter squares of annual um, average wind speed. So that's sort of a case example of how um, a, a small wind turbine can, you know, meet the demands in, in, these, in, these, in these island communities. Um, this is just another various uh, configuration by which, um, uh, you know, small wind uh, uh, turbines can be used in in these in this ecosystem. So, obviously, as mentioned before, you have you know the behind the meter um, aspects where you know the uh, it's sort of installed on the on the customer side of the of the of the, of the distribution system. However, I think as has been mentioned previously, you can also have it to um, the front of the meter where uh, it's sort of connected connected to the distribution grid. Uh, all uh, just taking into account the challenges that I mentioned before. In my previous slide, there are other ways to also try to see if there's, if there's a possibility to develop microgrids so that, you know, there's more flexibility in the system. And then last but not least, there are other ways by trying to explore hybrid systems where, you know, you try to take benefits from wind and solar to complement each other because the availability of these resources um, is also dependent on whether <coughs> hybrid system could be useful. And also in some cases, you know, just to have a backup trying to see if it, there is a way to sort of link wind and not preferably, but, you know, a diesel system could also be uh, another uh, uh, configuration by which, you know, small island, island states um, can benefit uh, from this technology. Um, so with regards to the planning of a small wind uh, turbine, obviously there are key considerations that need to be um, taken into account. So mainly the, the availability of land, Doing a thorough wind uh, resource assessment, um, looking at payback options with regards to the um, the electricity generated and obviously the cost environment, um, having a, a conducive local uh, regulation environment to to ensure that all these um, key in installation infrastructures can be uh, can be uh, implemented in a quick amount of time, and then also providing incentives to ensure that you know there's there's a, a stimulus of of interest and investment in the ecosystem are are key decisions that will you know allow for small island states to sort of consider SWTs as um, a viable option. And with regards to um, installation, it's really imp important to ensure that the correct turbine um, um, size is chosen and also to ensure that um, the sizing, be it mi micro or micro, is, is, is appropriate. With regards to the next steps, so after these considerations have been have been sort of determined, it's important to see whether or not the system should be connected to the electrical get grid or not. And uh, I think as been mentioned previously, it's very important to have the right people with the right skills and certifications to ensure that they are installed properly, installed properly, but also beyond that, when they are installed, to ensure that that they can be maintained um, um, correctly. So here are some key considerations uh, when you look at planning for uh, um, small wind turbines in, in in the context. Of an, of an island community. Um, and last but not least, some of the enabling policies that you know I think would be beneficial, at least in the in the case of you know small wind, uh, small island um, states or remote communities, is obviously promoting uh, policies that allow for the correct estimation of wind resources uh, potential for using computer modeling and satellite data to ensure that there are investments in the development of robust turbine. Mm -hmm or that they can withstand extreme weather conditions, um, providing options also to explore different hybrid energy systems, as mentioned previously, is another um, uh, way to promote this technology in these type of communities. And also then looking at different forms of financial instruments like loans, tax incentives, electricity tariffs, uh, net metering policy. These are all uh, 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 enabling factors that can make you know, this technology more and more attractive and a viable option for countries that would like to take advantage um, of the technology. And I think what's needs, what where work needs to be done moving forward is obviously developing new standards and certifications to ensure that there's a common sort of understanding among the community with regards to small wind turbines and to also ensure that there's a standardized um, um, a sort of um, interconnection requirements when, when looking at the uh, connection of these turbines to the to the grids. So I think these are some uh, these are some key factors that will inform policies for small wind turbines in general. But I think that these are very true when it comes to small island um, and developing states. So that's uh, where I think we are with regards to our small wind turbine research. I mean, these are the resources that we have used to, you know, make this presentation. Uh, I, just, I just also wanted to express on behalf of Gayatri and myself and also an idea that I think this would be a very interesting topic for us to do further analysis. So I think we would be very happy to connect with anyone who is interested to 
you know, uh, perhaps reach out to us and see if there are any opportunities to um, do research in this area moving forward, because it's uh, definitely a new area within our wind portfolio, wind, wind portfolio here um, at Arena. So I just wanted to put that out there. And thank you very much for your kind of attention. I mean, I, I put our website over here in case you can see uh, what we are in, 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 in other areas. And yeah, our contact details are there in case you wish to reach out uh, to us. So thank you very much for your kind of attention and uh, apologies again for the technical uh, interruptions at the start um, of the meeting. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Shadev. And obviously the problem you had with screen sharing, you're not the only one I kept that with my Mac as well. Not this time, fortunately, but... Um, you can tell me, maybe send me an email later how you solved it at the end. So yeah, it's been, uh, uh, of course, great to hear from you. Actually, we worked on this, but more from the angle of standardization certification. That was a couple of years back where we had colleagues of you working on that. I'm glad that the way that you've already looking into this now, you're identifying some market, uh, like, uh, I don't want to call it niches, but some places where it makes sense. Small islands is an example where uh, small wind turbines make sense. And of course, we look forward to working with you and identify areas of where there could be a collaboration on this. Um, do we have any, any questions from the audience? I mean, I'm glad you shared your contact details because everybody can was contact you directly yeah. uh, and as I said we certainly as the small wind section want to be in contact and after this uh, webinar stay in touch as well so if we don't have any um, uh, at, at the moment any questions or comments there is one from Ian so <clears throat> maybe a quick one um, and this is especially we don't have lots of um, presentations here from the southern hemispheres, um, and certainly Irina spends a lot of time kind of looking at island nations um, and and the southern hemisphere. Um, moving maybe a bit beyond small wind, but into to kind of the larger distributed wind marketplace. Certainly, it, it seems that um, one of the key issues that we're going to face in this energy transition is the lack of transmission infrastructure. We're already seeing it in um, in North America and Europe. Um, and that's going to be even harder, uh, obviously, in island communities, but but more so in Africa, Southeast Asia, um, a, um, Lat sorry, Latin America as well. And it would seem to me that distributed energy sources, even small, kind of at local businesses, would play a huge role in allowing us to electrify. Um, what is your sense of of that? Does Irina kind of have similar viewpoints, or is Irina um, still kind of thinking what, what the World Bank thinks, which is huge transmission infrastructure will lead to huge renewable energy development, and, and that's going to be the solution. Yeah, no, so I think actually my colleague Gayathri would be the right uh, focal point for this because she's, uh, oh, is our mic working, Gayathri? Is your... let's, let's try now, yeah. Oh. No, <laughs> Because this is really her area of expertise. I mean, her team is the one that actually does <laughs> the work on this. But um, I, I guess I, to to, your, to to answer your question, no, I do think it's important that you know transmission infrastructure will be important. But I think there are other facets, you know, by which um, uh, communities can you know take advantage um, of you know these different technologies. I don't think I don't think we follow the World Bank model where we just say. You know, here's the transmission infrastructure, and this is what's going to, you know, create uh, the demand. No, I think there are other facets by which uh, uh, we we do envision that renewable energy technologies, including small wind, uh, will uh, will you know be be able to be promoted. Um, as I've mentioned in my presentation, I mean, when it comes to to policies um, uh, um, and uh, financial incentives, I think would be the would be other options. And I think my uh, colleague Gayatri has put something in the chat um, as well, so just to sort of take uh, her point. So, you know, we work on, I mean, that, so her team actually works on grid, grid uh, um, assessments and, you know, they, I think from their analysis, they have come to the conclusion that transmission expansion is not the only solution uh, to, to promote this. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, basically, she, they, they're encouraging distributed uh, electricity resources at the low voltage level, essentially, to, to promote uh, promote this option. And yeah, Mozambique is an example of when this is happening. So um, Ian, if you'd like to reach out to us, please send us an email and we'll be happy to take this uh, conversation further. Thank you. 
which is, by the way, not only a, a matter for the, the, the so-called developing countries, but also in, like I'm living, you, you're also living in Bonn, yeah. and we hear there that the, the, the local utility says that people cannot install a, a normal EV charger uh, because the grid is not strong enough. And if we now in the future have a, a electric vehicle plus a, a heat pump, then we come to, obviously there need to be adjustments to the distribution grid everywhere. I think yep. this is something whenever we come to the distribution side that needs to be regarded. Yep. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Do we have other comments, questions? Oh, we're, we're a little bit behind our actual original schedule, but I do appreciate that you're still all with us. And then I would uh, uh, turn to our uh, certainly not least last very important speaker, uh, and that is Ignacio Cruz from Spain, from CMAT, from a government agency. And Ignacio uh, personally has been involved a lot in supporting small wind working from a governmental perspective. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Also, what you have to say, maybe giving some advice to what Irina is doing, which is actually obviously in, the, in, in terms of small wind energy, um, more in this kind of initial phase. Ignacio, a warm welcome to you and we look forward to hearing from you. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Thank you, the association, to invite us to participate in this interesting workshop. Uh, I'm going to share my presentation. Yeah, I make you co-host so it should work well. Let me see. Yes. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay. Okay. This presentation is, is going to address the, yes, the, the ideas that, uh, that uh, at least in Spain, uh, the government is trying to uh, put in place for, in order to support the small and medium wind. And then we'll see, yes, an uh, overview about the situation, the market situation. Uh, it's, uh, uh, this overview has uh, been known to, uh, two years ago, and data are a little bit, uh, data from uh, five years. So it's uh, information maybe not very well, um, very uh, at all, but, uh, but, but the, the interest is just to analyze the the, scope, the 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 level of the market, and then we'll see something about the technology the technology system in Spain. So, this is the overview regulatory frameworks, looking for ideas or market size, main actors, main applications areas. So first, there are some support schemes. All of them focus on on subsidies on the capital cost of the technology. So there are uh, support schemes based on autonomous communities, most of them based on uh, fund, European regional development funds. There are some, some uh, autonomous communities uh, with uh, better support, and we'll see that this is very crucial for the deployment of the small wind, small and medium wind especially in Canary Islands or other regions like Galicia or other regions in, in Spain. There are also some support schemes from, from municipalities, very focused on real estate extraction or, or also a, 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 a capital cost reduction, but also some, some support from the central government. So, in all of them, we have identified one problem, which is the, 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 the this support is uh, this support is technology neutral, so it's exactly in general terms it's very similar for PV, solar PV, or small wind. So resources are very competitive, both of them in Spain, but the cost of the solar PV is, is lower. So We'll see that the the more recept, the better reception of this kind of, sort of subsidies is going to P 
PV rather than a small and medium wind. It's really tough just to get consumers that decide to 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 buy or to install a, a small or medium-sized wind turbine. This is the first important idea. Then there is another another possibility that is the cell phone sanction. So there is a great interest to promote the cell phone sanction. And there are a lot of, uh, a bunch of, of, of royal decrees and laws that are promoting uh, the, the, so the self-consumption uh, in Spain. So Britain is more or less the same. Uh, roadmap is self-consumption energy roadmap is going quite well, but I don't have the, the update uh, data from the last year. But I, um, we are waiting for the Spanish Energy Agency that some uh, some data. But the results, the, the first approach, it seems looks that the the uh, solar PV is winning as is winning in, uh, if we compare with a small and medium size wind turbine. So something has to be done in order to. Um, they positively discriminate the small and medium wind uh, installations. So here you can see just as a sample, which are the support lines of, uh, for self-consumption for industrial, residential, and public entities, public buildings, where there are different, different support intensity and different capital cost uh, subsidy. All of them are in general quite well. We, the intensity could reach 50% of the capital cost of the, this is our specific cost of the wind turbines. So uh, I think that taking into account the cost of the energy those days and, and the 50% of uh, support intensity in the, in the subsidy. So I think that uh, small wind will, will, uh, uh, will, go forward in the coming years uh, in, a, in a better situation. What about the market existing, the old, uh, past uh, market size? So we can see here that is very, so this analysis was done taking data from the Spanish Green Energy Agency, idea, IDAI. Uh, it was this study uh, shows that the uh, wind, the small wind, small and medium wind turbines uh, not connected to the grid were uh, around 600, 700 uh, installations with uh, 4.5 gigawatts of total capacity. This is more or less the information that has been uh, found in the, in the register of the energy, Spanish Energy Agency. This is the information by autonomous regions, the distribution, so by installations and by stall power. We'll see that there are communities with a larger uh, wind turbines, with a bigger wind turbines installed, all of them small or medium size, max 100 kilowatts, and others with uh, so many um, uh, small, uh, small uh, wind turbines. This is just an overview about the manufacturers. So the main manufacturer is uh, Spanish manufacturer. Main, main supplier is uh, Bornai Aerogeneradores, a local manufacturer. But there are second one with, based on this study, which uh, it was Southwest from the States, from the United States. So there are a bunch of, of manufacturers. You can see a very large list of, of, of OEMs or of manufacturers including uh, vertical acid wind turbines for, for even for urban applications like, like uh, donkey or urban, urban green energy. If we look at the analysis by year of installation, we can see, so you can see that this analysis is from 1985 to 2016. And there are several years uh, around 20, 2000, 2001, 2002, with a large uh, is a number of installations. This was uh, based on the. This is based on the on the specific projects or programs, 
that develop a large amount of, of small wind turbines in Balearic Islands, for instance. Uh, uh, these specific programs promote and stimulate the, the, the deployment of the small wind turbines in this area. This is the reason of this specific uh, peak of, of, of number of installations. Looking at the distribution by rate power, we see that the largest number of installations are 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 kilowatts. So very small wind turbines. Second situation is the 1.5 is the uh, big, uh, uh, the more frequent installation, and then three kilowatts. This is the more or less the so you can see that we can see that the, most of the installations are really addressing small installations uh, up to three kilowatts. Here we can see another information based on a survey carried out with the manufacturers. Uh, those are the manufacturers that answer the, the survey the questionnaire, and uh, we can see that they, they, we, we count uh, 31 gigawatts, but we include a large uh, wind turbines, for instance, 100 kilowatts, two, two uh, 100 kilowatts wind turbines from Argolabe, and 25 from Norvent, from another local manufacturer. We can see that there are another manufacturers like Bornai or Enera or Rice, Ener, Rice Energy Ener, and Sol Ener with a huge amount of installations, but very small, small capacity, small rate power, average rate power. Conclusions, we can say that the Spain, the small and mid side wind market is evolving very slowly. Recent high electricity prices are operating as a, are stimulating the use of distributed wind as viable power supply solution in island specific. So there are so many uh, wind installations in the pipeline in, in islands, especially in, in Canary Islands. Providing small applications, only of grid applications in remote areas or telecom applications, usually in hybrid solutions with solar PV, present some market progress. Wind energy communities and small scale wind self consumption are pending market areas. So, the government thinks that these are offerings uh, big interest for, for a small and medium size wind uh, installations or turbines. At CMR, we are working on ARD projects uh, together with the uh, manufacturers in order to promote the hybridization of systems. And in general, there is a great interest in the Spanish government to promote energy community self consumption. Uh, these studies are being very successful with solar PV, but not with distributed wind. The reason, as I already mentioned, is the high solar radiation, uh, solar radiation, high solar radiation, sorry. And the, and the high competitiveness of PV solutions in terms of cost, capital cost, especially. Regarding the manufacturers, Spanish manufacturers, there are still several manufacturers. Uh, we have four groups from one to five to six kilowatts rate power. There are three manufacturers in horizontal axis wind turbines, Bornai, Rise Energy, Rice Energy, and Solener. And there are uh, one manufacturer on vertical axis wind turbines, Geolica Innovations, Plus Innovation. There are two manufacturers with uh, products in the range of uh, from seven to 60 kilowatts, Rice Energy and, and Solener. And there are also two manufacturers offering products in the range uh, from 61 to 100 kilowatts, especially 100 kilowatts wind turbines, rate power, both of them. Norbento and Nergolabe. And finally, there are also two manufacturers working on the range 100 kilowatts to 150, which is which are Electria, Wind, and Ades. So just a very brief view of the manufacturers. These are the three models of Bornai aerogeneradores. Uh, uh, one, three kilowatts and five kilowatts wind turbines for all kinds of applications of grid, uh, direct water, uh, pumping, grid connection or telecom applications mainly. And air 
uh, rice energy with uh, five models from from three kilowatts to sixty kilowatts rate of power wind turbines. Norbento with uh, two model, two one model net uh, one hundred kilowatts, but two classes uh, IEC classes uh, plus three A two A. Applications, especially in Canary Islands, in a petrol station and restaurant and restaurants, or in a quarry in Galicia. So there are so many installations now going on. Here we can see some special, specific applications so with a microgrid, with a wind turbine and power in terms of electricity and thermal energy. And uh, another project in execution in a bio refinery with a hybrid PV system, PV wind system, with a 100 kilowatts wind turbine. Here we can see the model of Clius, the vertical acid wind turbine with nine blades, uh, a very, very specific uh, vertical acid wind turbine for hybrid applications. Here we can see a case study uh, for a, a specific uh, uh, isolated uh, detach uh, house power supply. And finally, uh, solutions energéticas, all in ERSA, with, uh, with five uh, models from four, uh, 0.3 kilowatts to 15 kilowatts rate power wind turbines. And from my side, that's, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Um, uh, Thank you very much, Ignacio, for presenting not only what governments can do, and you had very concrete kind of information about what Spain is doing to support, uh, but also giving us the market overview of what is happening in, in Spain. So it's good to see that there are actual players there. Um, and yeah, I what I again um, remember for I, one keyword I believe uh, I heard today many times, I heard that also from you was self-consumption. I think this is something that really uh, is a concept that if that is strengthened uh, could probably serve in different kind of environments, small wind, because it, it uh, obviously small wind can help a lot to be used for self-consumption. Um, now, let me look whether we have any questions or comments on your presentation, knowing that uh, it, we are now um, coming to the end and uh, of of our webinar, and people have been listening. Some of them, obviously, really um, all the time participating. So I don't see any uh, raised hands here. Um, so with this, I would say thank you very much, um, Ignacio, and. I think we are now in the situation that we we are reconnecting the small wind people around the world. This webinar is hopefully part of it. Um, thank you for speaking to us. And uh, I would then like to conclude uh, today's webinar, um, uh, not without uh, kind of promising you that this will not be the last one we've already discussed with Mike Berge and Fritz Ock with the two chairs of our small wind section that we're planning as another webinar, which will focus more on the products inviting manufacturers to present what their products can deliver and how they can provide the solutions that we need. Again, as I say, I think self-consumption is a key part of all this. We heard a lot about like in the northern, probably also southern, yeah, in Argentina, that was mentioned in the southern hemisphere, where there is winter, not that much sun throughout the whole year. Um, and we also heard about island solutions. So there are uh, obviously many options where we have potentially markets for small wind and the markets already exists, also driven by policies like we heard now from Spain or from the uh, inflation reduction um, act uh, in the United States. With this, let me conclude again by saying a big thank you to all our speakers, to everybody who contributed also uh, questions, comments. Um, thank you very much. And uh, 
I'm uh, I assure you we will continue this. Those who have an interest working globally, of course, we are always happy to uh, get support, also in, in, in the sense of additional members. This small wind section has been has had a quite dynamic development because many of those companies that joined us disappeared from the markets. Um, yeah, have made that uh, challenging also for an association to continue the work on this. I wish you all, wherever you are, a good day, a good evening, a good night. Stay safe, and I hope to meet you all soon again. And the recordings of this webinar will soon be made available on our YouTube channel. And go and check our website because you will find the link there. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank you.